in the recording. And here we go. So hello, hello, and welcome, welcome, welcome to Food is Medicine, Eating Right for You, sponsored by the Black Vegetarian Society of Maryland and presented by True Self Total Health. If you have shown up, you probably have more than a passing interest in your health and happiness. I wanna thank you for taking the time um, to invest in you. Our commitment to you is to provide you with a content-rich presentation in a format that hopefully is easy to understand and interact with. I also know how frustrating it can be to get really great information but not know how to implement it. That's why we will uh, spend about three to four minutes after the presentation outlining uh, an action plan that's easy for you. So here's a few housekeeping issues. We're gonna answer questions at the end of the presentations to keep a good flow. You can post your questions in the chat. Some of you have already been active there um, as we go along or just ask to speak after the um, conference or after the class. Everyone will remain off video and muted. I encourage you to do that, please, um, to eliminate distractions. Also, super important, you are eligible to participate in a raffle just for showing up today, just for showing up. The link to enter the raffle uh, will be um, given to you at the end of this um, conference, at the end of this class, and you'll be eligible for a $25 Whole Foods Market um, certificate, so you can buy some yummy plant foods. Uh, we're also going to invite you to, to uh, complete a brief survey. Everyone who submits will receive a free one-year subscription to Vegetarian Journal and an African Plate Recipe book. Moving right along. Without me, my name is Tony Sanders Fish, owner and CEO of True Self Total Health. And I've had this business for about 10 years, assisting and guiding people who have forgotten or maybe have not learned how to stay healthy and balanced. I'm also on the team at Capital Integrative Health uh, in Bethesda, Maryland, as a health coach. I'm a transformational health coach with nutrition, mindset, and lifestyle. So among other things, I help people detoxify their bodies and minds, um, learn how to eat healthy foods, and improve their health and happiness or wellness. Today, I'm going to empower you with information to understand how to eat right for you. So why am I qualified to do this? Well, I'm a certified nutritional endocrinologist. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Whoever is mute uh, is not muted. Please mute all phones because I'm having a hard time hearing. Mute your devices, please, and thank you. Thank you. Um, and Nanaja, you can do that. You're a co-host, so you can go in and mute everyone, except me, of course. <laughs> all right. Thank you. So we'll go back. Okay. Again, what makes me qualified to teach this class? Other than my passion, obviously, for health and wellness, I'm a certified nutritional endocrinology coach and educator. I am a certified digestive health coach. I am a certified insulin resistance coach. I'm a certified plant-based nutrition educator and a certified raw vegetarian um, chef and instructor. And all that means is that I've been trained to understand how to use food to manage and manipulate hormones. I've been trained to help you absorb and digest as a digestive health coach. And I've been trained to educate and help you make uh, those yummy foods as a chef and an instructor. Now, as you know, this webinar is being sponsored by the Black Vegetarian Society of Maryland. Our executive director, Naja Wright Brown, is here, and she'd like to chat with you for just a few minutes. Go for it, Naja. Oh, you need to unmute. I'll unmute you. There you go. Oh, <laughs> hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, I am happy to uh, sponsor True Self Total Health in this Food as Medicine webinar uh, that is free to all of you. And as Tony mentioned, uh, at the end of the webinar, if you complete the survey, we do, if you complete the survey and you want to opt in to receive the Vegetarian Journal um, uh, for one year for free, you will get that if you provide your mailing address and also an African plate recipe e-booklet. Um, so again, it is optional. Uh, the survey definitely helps us to provide you with uh, the programming that's needed and gives us an idea of what, what uh, we should offer you to assist you further. Um, the Black Vegetarian Society's website is B 
vsmd.org. If you opt in to the email address, you will receive a uh, salads recipe um, booklet that you can um, download. So again, thank you for joining and um, uh, have fun. And I hope you uh, take a lot of uh, information in and it benefits you after the webinar. Thank you so much, Naj. I, I opened up the front page so that you can see the um, see the email address for Black Veg Society as well as my email address or, or my um, or my uh, internet address, the web the website address. So in case you need to contact us. All right. So uh, why are we offering this workshop? Well, generally, as a society, we are overfed but undernourished. Uh, specifically based on my experience with clients who generally eat right but don't feel right. Um, so if this sounds like you, you're in the right place. And I want to empower you with information and practical tools to take control of your health. It's super important any time in your life, but it can't be more important than it is than it is now during this pandemic. So I'm hoping that you find um, this information helpful, useful, and more importantly, um, easy to apply and practical. It is meant for you um, to customize and optimize my job is to provide you with good information based on my training. Your job is to take your body wisdom and understanding of your body and what your needs are with, based on that assessment and, and put together a plan that's right for you, not right for your neighbor, not right for your mother, but right for you that will yield the results that you need right away. So I have to give you this disclaimer. Um, it's a long disclaimer, but there's just a couple of things I want you to be aware of. This presentation is meant to be educational only. So it's a sharing of information based on my experience and training or the experience of experts I rely on. It's not intended as medical advice, right? It's, I'm not treating, curing, diagnosing any conditional illness. So if you have a condition that requires medical attention, please seek it. Since I'm not a licensed practitioner, physician, dietitian, nutritionist, nurse, or, practice, or a medical professional, if you like what you're hearing and you're ready to take charge of your health, Please share with your doing, uh, what you're doing um, with a physician with a kind of chronic condition. This is designed just to keep you safe. Okay, food is medicine. So um, you want to make sure that whatever you do, you're doing to support yourself and not um, doing harm. So I'm just curious, why are you here? Why are you here? Maybe, maybe you're eating right and not feeling right. Maybe you've tried everything. This is what I've heard my clients say. I've tried everything and I still can't create a health and lifestyle program that meets your goal. Maybe you're frustrated about your health journey and finding more holistic approaches to diagnose or suspected illnesses and discomfort. Maybe you've consulted Dr. Google. Many of my clients come to me and they've just researched their symptoms to death and they just can't, they're just confused and, and, and confused and chasing symptoms. Maybe you're just here because you're curious. You're just curious about the power of plant-based eating to optimize your health. So if any of this sounds like you, you're in the right place. It's my hope that this webinar empowers you with information and practical tools and inspires you to take control of your health right now. Food as medicine. Maybe some of you have heard this quote before. The beauty of food as medicine is that the choice to heal and promote health can begin as soon as the next meal. Real food, not food-like substances, provide nutrients to support our mental and physical health. Now, nutrient deficiencies and insufficiencies are the root cause of disease, discomfort, and dissatisfaction. We nourish our bodies uh, with nutrition, and we also deplete our bodies with the lack thereof. So anything that is going on in your body is due to a lack of proper nutrition. Um, that that you want to set a level, organ level. Is medicine. This is what we're going to cover. We're going to cover reasons for nutrient deficiencies, signs of common nutrient deficiencies, highest food sources of specific nutrients, and more importantly than anything else, how you can choose a diet to support your bio-individual nutritional needs based on your understanding of your body. I like to educate and empower. So this format is designed to allow you to make informed decisions about your health based on facts and your body wisdom. You need to understand that nutrient imbalances can be either deficiencies or excesses, but in this society, they're mostly deficiencies. Um, excess can occur when you're supplementing, but again, that's rare. Nutrient imbalances can be the result of food consumption or the lack thereof, 
and how well you're digesting and assimilating the food you eat. So we're just gonna focus on food consumption for this class and touch on some of the other areas. Let's talk about what nutrients are. I think it's important that people understand. So um, nutrients are um, macronutrients or micronutrients. They are the building blocks for our health. Macronutrients are the nutrients we need to take into our body on a regular basis in relatively large quantities like water, protein, carbohydrates, and fat. Now, unfortunately, this is what most people focus on when they eat for health. Micronutrients are really what you need because micronutrients, often referred to as vitamins and minerals, are vital to healthy development, disease prevention, and well-being. They're only needed in trace amounts, but if you don't get them, you will not, if you don't get them in the right quantity and the right quality, you can never have good health. So what do you think of all these macronutrients? What do you think um, uh, most people are deficient in in this country? Or even in the world? Well, just in this country. If you said protein, you're wrong. It's water. So we're gonna talk about that first, and then we're gonna take a deeper dive into the micronutrients. So again, only, although they're only required in small amounts, micronutrients can't be produced by the body, so they must be derived from the diet. If you, if you lack micronutrients, it can have a devastating effect. And we're gonna talk about um, some of the major um, micronutrient deficiencies that I've seen in my practice. I can't discuss them all because we don't really have the time for that. Um, let's discuss reasons for nutrient deficiencies. These are some of the reasons that I've seen in my practice, eating the same food all the time, not eating enough nutrient-dense food, eating when you're stressed because you're not going to digest food when you're stressed, not chewing your food, digestion begins in the mouth, um, uh, digestive impairment or dysfunction, medication or uh, prescribed drugs, alcohol and dehydration. Now, sometimes when you're looking for reasons that things are out of balance in your bodies, uh, we forget the basics. We forget the basics. Like one, of, one or more of these items on the list um, is always the root cause. Now, it's not exotic or sexy, but it's still impactful and, and overlooked. So as you're looking to improve your diet, using food as medicine, don't forget some of these other things on the list. Sometimes we eat the same food all the time due to habit of convenience, right? And that results in a lack of variety. We have to eat a rainbow of food. Sometimes we're just not eating enough nutrient-dense food, way too much packaged food. And that's not really food. That's food-like substances, that, that's dead food. And I, I don't even want to call it food. It's, it's, um, it's food-like objects. Maybe you're not eating enough fresh, whole plant foods, organic, which are way more nutrient-dense. If you're eating when stressed, digestion is impaired because you're in fight or flight mode. If you're not chewing your food, the mechanical breakdown of food takes place in the mouth and those digestive enzymes aren't released, so you're never going to digest fully. If you have any kind of digestive impairment or dysfunction, this could include stomach not producing enough acid to break down proteins and minerals, leaky gut, SIBO, common drugs like metformin, and blood sugar, um, uh, the blood sugar regulation and statins for cholesterol can also interfere with digestion. And definitely alcohol can inhibit your body from absorbing um, vitamins. Even just one drink um, a week can, can inhibit your body from absorbing vitamins. Dehydration. Again, we talked about that water is actually a nutrient. So I want everybody to be aware that water is a nutrient. So this is a good place to actually start our discussion about common nutrient deficiencies. And this is, this is in fact the most common deficiency. So I wanna spend some time here. So the function of water and nutrition, it transports nutrients, it dilutes toxins, it lubricates cells, it affects electrolyte balance, and it's a critical um, it's critical for optimal digestion and elimination. So um, you, can, you can go a long time, you probably already know this, you can go a long time without food, maybe 30 to 40 days, depending on your fat storage, but only maybe five days without water. And so many people overlook the importance of water. Um, and just as a side note, I hope by now everyone understands that your water should be clean, meaning not tap. Right? It needs to be contaminant free of chemicals like chloride and uh, chlorine and fluoride and it needs to have no uh, sediments. Filtered water is super important. So make sure that when you're drinking water that it's clean. That was a public service announcement, but I think by now everybody understands the importance of drinking clean water. So let's talk about signs of dehydration, uh, deficient, signs of deficiency of dehydration. So many of my clients come to me with these, um, with these symptoms and we always start with the basics first, drink water and see what happens. So um, these symptoms could be related to other issues or nutrient imbalances, but water first is always a good idea. 
So if you're tired or flushed or irritable, you have disturbed sleep, shortness of breath, feeling heavy headed, craving stimulants or alcohol, maybe you're feeling depressed, feeling dejected, disturbed sleep, dreaming of oceans. Yes, I've had clients say they dream of water or you have a short attention span. It's always start with water first. Okay. Now, once you, you, you think you're um, um, hydrated enough, uh, many people think they are. Um, many aren't because now they're having these challenges and pains associated with dehydration, like constipation. That's the most common one. But you could also um, um, have allergies and asthma and high blood pressure, diabetes and autoimmune diseases and migraines and rheumatoid arthritis, lower back pain, angina. These are all related um, to um, dehydration. Now, in his book, I, I cite um, You're Not Sick, You're Thirsty. Um, by Dr. B, I can't pronounce his last name. Um, he talks about the, the uh, mechanism by which dehydration triggers things like asthma and all that. So you may wish to um, look at his book or research his book. So I hope you now understand the, how, how, how this particular nutrient imbalance could be the, the root cause of your discomfort. So don't overlook it. We always go after the shiny objects, the sexy, you know, it's all about the food. And usually just maybe just drinking water uh, will take care of a lot of your problems. I'm gonna provide you with a hydration guideline because a lot of my clients don't understand how to hydrate properly. So here's the guidelines. Drink half your body weight in ounces each day, more if you're exercising. It's also important when you drink your food to make sure that you don't dilute your stomach acid. So you wanna drink beverages um, between meals. The ideal spacing is 30 meals um, before eating. Um, you should drink whenever you're thirsty, even during meals, but if you have to drink during the meals, just sip. Don't gulp and try not to drink too much. So you don't want to dilute your digestion or uh, impair your digestion. You want to drink two and a half hours after a meal. Why? Because you want to give your body a chance to digest food properly. You want to drink water first thing in the morning, two to three cups or glasses to optimize bowel function. And you want to drink one half hour before exercise and make sure you're fully hydrated. Now, I know we spent a lot of time in that area, but it was super important for me um, not to overlook this especially since you're trying to use food as medicine and resolve maybe some um, disease discomfort or dissatisfaction that you have. Um, you all should have received the nutrient assessment chart, although there are many, many nutrients in, um, on that chart. I decided that given our uh, lack of time or, or limited time, that I would just focus on the common nutrient deficiencies that I see in my practice. And um, hopefully you will glean something from this to make some changes in your life. So many people come to me because maybe they're experiencing symptoms or they've been diagnosed with diseases. Now, these are a few of the most common deficiencies that are the root cause. So how do we determine that? My clients usually complete a self-assessment form or I review their uh, complete metabolic blood test uh, from a functional health perspective, or I look at the a diagnosis that they receive from a physician, all right? Uh, there are also specific blood tests that measure nutrients in the body, how you're using it, but they're very, very expensive. And I find that um, when I had a client that paid four to $500 for the nutrient assessment uh, for the blood test, and we compared it to her own self-assessment, you know, it, it wasn't that far off. I mean, the level of deficiency, we can't always cite, but um, we were able to glean that she did have some deficiencies and um, so I'm just saying that's what the doctor doesn't have to use the time and effort to fill it out. So there are other reasons for these common nutrient deficiencies in addition to not just not absorbing and not taking them in is because we're eating things that come from the food of soul. Or we're eating way too much processed food, which is not food at all. I really think using the word uh, food is processed because at that point they're just chemicals. So let's talk about magnesium. It's uh, essential catalyst for food metabolism and energy release. It's essential for maintaining normal muscle and nerve function. It's essential for keeping a healthy immune system. And it's essential for maintaining heart rhythm and building strong bones. Actually, if you don't have enough magnesium, that's just a whole host of problems that can occur. And um, that is the major nutrition deficiency I see when I work with my clients, not, not protein magnesium and here is the number of um, deficiency signs that's on your, your nutrient assessment chart too so you can, you can 
see that there are a lot of deficiency signs and it could be there could be other things as well but if you're experiencing you know two or three of these you might want to look at your magnesium intake or um, determine whether or not you have some sort of absorption problem so you can see it's anxiety breastless confusion constipation chronic stress cramps dandruff depression excessive earwax even a heart attack hyperactivity insomnia irregular heartbeats irritability irritable bowel syndrome muscle weakness nausea nervousness noise sensitivity pms restlessness spasms twitching and sores around the mouth and breaking nails these are all signs of a magnesium deficiency now you can see in the plant-based world there are so many sources of magnesium right um, so you just pick what appeals to you all leafy greens have magnesium including kale romaine lettuce and collard greens um, also fruits like watermelon raspberry so the recommended daily allowance that you see there is, is based on um, age so it'll vary based on your needs and that's why a nutrient assessment chart is important so if you know one cup may not be enough for you um, depending on your age and um, and your level of deficiency or lack thereof so look at the wonderful I mean there's nothing I, I, I would imagine there's at least one or two things on here that you could easily eat. And this is an area where you can vary things up greatly. Um, leafy greens are much more easy to digest and get into your body than let's say um, beans, which take a little bit more effort to digest. So if you know you have some digestive issues, you may wish to um, juice or do smoothies to get that magnesium in you, which is so important. So as a cofactor for genetic processes and actions, as a matter of fact, it is cofactor for about three to four hundred things that the body does. So you always have to make sure that zinc is um, is up to uh, your therapeutic level, your therapeutic level, not your neighbors. It's involved in wound healing and it's involved in protein protein synthesis and supports the immune function, which you probably already knew. So let's talk about zinc deficiency symptoms. Excuse me, Tony, before you go to the next slide, I think there's something that you're hitting that's hitting your speaker because oh, okay. every time you do it, we can't hear anymore. Thank you so much. Oh, no problem. Okay. Is that better? I, I just. Uh, yeah, it's been happening since the beginning. We were trying to figure it out, but we figured it was you. Okay. So something going on in your end. Okay. <laughs> Our apologies, everyone. Well, thank you. Thank you for doing that. I'd rather you interrupt so that they could get the, you know, hear it. So let's talk about zinc deficiency symptoms from the nutrient assessment chart. There's, you can uh, experience acne, a decreased sense of taste. That's um, and, and even with COVID nineteen, they're 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 determining that people um, have a decreased sense of ta uh, taste uh, because they don't have any zinc anymore. Of course, they've been exposed to the to the virus. Um, if you uh, one of the nutrients, of, one of the symptoms is uh, you the inability actually to form scars easily. History of Crohn's disease, overconsumption of sweets. Poor per perception of sweet, of, um, rashes, uh, retarded growth, slow wound healing, smelly feet. Yep, smelly feet. That's a sign of zinc deficiency. Um, tendency towards infections, white spots on your nails, puffy gums, and cracked fingertips. Now, you can also, uh, on your labs, um, a basic metabolic uh, lab test that you get when you get a physical, if you look at your alkaline phosphate and if it's low, then, um, then you have a zinc deficiency or possibly a zinc deficiency. So why is zinc deficiency so common? Because you need strong stomach acid. And as we age, um, our stomach acid goes down a little bit because we, we don't, um, we're not eating enough zinc to produce stomach acid. So it's like what came first, um, the chicken or the egg. But um, as we age, we're just not producing enough um, stomach acid. So uh, that's one of the first places I start when I see people with zinc deficiency is I look at intake, but then I'm also looking at, you know, their stomach acid and building that up too. So if your nails look like this, you have a zinc deficiency. Notice the white spots, right? So slow wound healing, brittle nails, poor nail growth, unhealthy hair. And unhealthy hair is like brittle and breaking, and of course, a poor immune system. So those are signs. Let's talk about food as medicine, the plant foods that have the highest 
um, amount of zinc. The, a very good quality source would be spinach, asparagus, shiitake mushrooms, and criminy mushrooms. A good source is sesame seeds, pumpkin seeds, cashews, quinoa, green peas, tofu, oats, and beet greens. This information um, can be found on the world's healthiest food site. I love that site because you can use that to build, it's like Build-A-Bear, you can build your own food as medicine um, plate. You can upgrade your plate um, just by going to that site once you determine what your deficiencies are and seeing which foods have the highest quality. Um, and some of these may not appeal to you. Some people may not be able to do pumpkin seeds and cashews and sesame seeds because they, you know, their liver um, can't process all that. So you have to figure out what your body can um, process and digest now. So it's all personal. Chromium, let's talk about chromium. It's a vital cofactor um, in the glucose tolerance factor, which uh, regulates the function of insulin. Basically, it controls your blood sugar. Most people that are diabetic or on that slippery slope, um, they are chromium deficient. Um, it's involved in food metabolism, it's involved in enzyme activation, and it's involved in the regulation of cholesterol. Here's the impact of chromium deficiency. We talked about it earlier, diabetes, uh, metabolic syndrome. That's when some, you know, your metabolic system start to, um, start to not function properly like cardiovascular. Um, insulin resistance, blood sugar swings, anxiety, fatigue, muscle weakness, and mood swings. So there are about seven bus stops for blood sugar dysregulation before you get the full blown diabetes. But if you don't catch it early enough, um, that can happen. And chromium is one of those hints or telltale signs uh, if you don't have enough, that if you're deficient, that you're not processing um, sugar properly. And the chart um, actually shows, uh, if you prepare, if you, if you looked at that chart, it should give you some indication of whether or not you are chromium deficient. All right, let's talk about plants highest in, um, in chromium. Broccoli is a superfood. I love broccoli for a lot of reasons, but it is a superfood. Among other nutrients, just one cup, one cup provides 53% of your daily recommended intake. And of course you have other, other foods like barley and oats and green beans and tomatoes and romaine lettuce and even black pepper um, is high in chromium. Let's talk about iodine. So I think this might be the last of the, um, of the minerals that we're talking about. So iodine supports immunity. It supports natural detoxification. It supports the thyroid function, most important. And it supports memory, energy, mood, and weight. So generally, it's used by your thyroid gland, you know, that, that butterfly-like gland that's in your throat to help regulate metabolism and the development of both your skeleton and brain, among other things. So if you look at your nutrient assessment chart, you'll, you'll probably see that um, uh, one of the, the things on the checklist talks about cretinism. So I want to explain what that is. That's a condition of... Um, severely stunted physical and mental growth um, in babies, which is um, due to untreated congenital deficiency of thyroid hormone. That means the mom um, had um, hypothyroidism or maternal hypothyroidism, probably because she didn't have enough um, iodine in her system. Okay. So let's talk about iodine symptoms of deficiency. Uh, goiters, that's the, when the um, the goiter is in the large enlargement of the thyroid gland itself. Fatigue, blood levels of TSH, that's your thyroid stimulating hormone increase. Intolerance of cold, cold hands and feet, even in the summer. Foggy thinking, you just can't quite um, get focused. Your increased need for sleep, dry skin, thinning hair, constipation. Again, these could all be signs of other things, but um, when you look at it in totality, if you have, you know, most of those, then most likely you have an iodine deficiency. And it's always best to take care of that. Let's talk about plant foods high in iodine. Sea vegetables. That includes nori and dulse and kelp, kelp and arami and wapani. And um, a lot of people um, aren't big fans of, of seafood, um, but I, I enjoy it and I've learned how to make it so it's quite delicious. Um, but so if you're not a big fan of, of, of that, you can also look at potatoes with the peel, baked beans, and even strawberries. Now the level of, uh, the, of the source, meaning I don't, you know, you'd have to look at the world's healthiest foods to see how much you're getting in relationship to the daily required um, intake and based on your own uh, personal needs. 
uh, but sea vegetables, just a tablespoon can give you everything you need for the day. Um, so I highly recommend that you cozy up to sea vegetables. And then again, there are many ways to get that in your diet that, that can be quite tasty. Let's talk about B6. B6, what it does. Now we're into the, the, we're into the um, vitamins part of our micronutrients presentation. So it's, it's essential to cover to over 100 enzymes, mostly involving protein metabolism. So when I see a blood test when my clients are not um, clearing uh, protein properly, it's usually due to a B6 deficiency. It's needed for normal, normal brain development and function. And it helps make the hormones serotonin, uh, which influence mood and melatonin, which helps regulate the body clock. It also helps absorb vitamin B12. Many, many people in this country are um, a B12 deficient and B6 deficient. All right. Signs of deficiency, anemia, breast cysts, PMS, stiff fingers in the morning, tooth decay, breaking nails, poor dream recall, dandruff, and excessive earwax. Um, deficiency of B6, and this is important, deficiency of B6 is correlated with elevated CRP. CRP is um, a, a panel on the blood test and it's related to cardiovascular inflammation. So if that goes up then obviously your, um, your, your uh, ability to, um, uh, to have a, a cardiac event is high. So we wanna make sure that we have enough B6 to make sure that cardiovascular inflammation is low and not high. Inflammation can also deplete B6. So many of us have systemic inflammation in the body. And super important, deficiency is possibly linked to cognitive decline. So many people um, um, that have um, cognitive uh, decline, such as dementia, they usually um, have had a long period of time of B6 deficiency. Let's talk about the foods highest in B6. Lots of yummy foods here spinach and cabbage and bok choy and bell peppers and turnip greens, cauliflower, sweet potatoes, potatoes and bananas. I do wanna note something here that um, if you're taking oral estrogens, that's gonna decrease um, the absorption of B6. So you need to be aware of that. Um, either, uh, I can't tell you what not to do or to stop taking, but just be aware um, that you may have to eat more foods or you may have to um, supplement with some liquid form of the nutrient. Let's talk about B1. It enables the body to use carbohydrates as energy, basically converts your food to energy. That's what you eat for so that you can use it. Um, it's essential for glucose metabolism and it plays a key role in nerve, muscle, and heart function. It also plays a role in appetite regulation. People with blood sugar dysregulation are deficient in B1. That's everything from um, hypoglycemic, hyperglycemic to full-blown diabetes. Um, they're, they're, they're definitely B1 um, deficient. So when I see that showing up in a blood test, I, um, I work with my clients to address it immediately. So here's some signs of a deficiency. Fatigue and dizziness, cold hands and feet, vertical ridges on the nails, bloating, numbness and tingling in the hands and the feet, memory loss, nausea, and a tender tongue. Um, if you drink a lot of coffee or, or you do heavy caffeine consumption, that can also cause a vitamin B1 deficiency. So if you're thinking that you're getting enough B1 in your diet and um, you're showing up with these deficiency signs, uh, you need to cut down or cut out your caffeine consumption. Let's talk about plant-based foods that are highest in B1, asparagus, sunflower seeds, green peas, Brussels sprouts, spinach, cabbage, eggplant, romaine lettuce, and legumes. I love brassicas. They are just like, again, they're, they're, they're a superfood as far as I'm concerned. Let's talk about, um, I think it's B5 that's next, B5. No, we just did B5, okay. There we go. There we are. I didn't keep up with this slide. So yeah, um, let me see, I'm confused. Let me see, go back. There we go. Foods highest in B5. Um, let me go back. There we go. Yeah. There we are. <laughs> there we go, B5. 
So um, it's necessary for making healthy blood cells. And it's also important for healthy skin, hair, and eyes. It's a super important nutrient. And again, I see, I see deficiency quite a bit. Here are the signs, abdominal pains, burning feet, insomnia, low blood pressure, hair loss, immune impairment, eczema, seasonal allergies, and muscle spasms. Foods highest in B5, mushrooms, cauliflower, again, those brassicas, sweet potatoes, broccoli. I love the bro broccoli, it's just amazing superfood. Avocado, celery, cucumbers, and lentils. So um, I'm hoping that there's something on here that you feel like you can enjoy um, in the plant-based world to make sure that you get your full complement of B5. Let's talk about B2, riboflavin. What does it do? It's important for energy production, just like the other B vitamins. They convert your food to energy. Important for growth and repair, and yeah, important for the thyroid function. The word flavin comes from the Latin word flavus, which means yellow. So um, vitamin B2 gets its name from its color. You might notice that um, when you supplement with B vitamins, particularly B2, um, and it's consumed in excess, your urine turns um, neon yellow um, because riboflavin gets excreted when it's not used. Talk about signs of deficiency, cracks and sores around your mouth, visual problems, low energy, eyes sensitive to light and you're tired easily, trembling and insomnia. Riboflavin deficiency may impair iron absorption as well. So it can also increase the intestinal loss of iron. So you can see how um, these nutrient deficiencies don't um, stand alone and they could have a cascading effect on other nutrients because they work together like a symphony. So if you have excesses or deficiencies um, where they, they require a the cofactor, um, you may start feeling um, symptoms in other areas and uh, a decline in your health overall. Let's talk about plant foods high in B12, B2 rather, brewer's yeast, almonds, um, whole grains, wheat germ, wild rice, mushroom, broccoli again, Brussels sprouts, and spinach. Unlike um, other nuts and seeds, uh, you, you all may or may not be aware of this, almonds are um, alkalizing to the body um, instead of acidic. The other nuts and seeds are acidic. So if you're concerned about your pH balance, you want to make sure you consume, keep your um, nuts and seeds to a minimum except almonds because they are um, alkalizing. They won't cause your pH balance to, um, to go off like the other nuts and seeds. Now here's how, here's how you develop your own action plan. First, you use that nutrient assessment chart that I provided for you. And I hope that some of you filled that out. I have a poll that we're going to use to um, see where everybody landed. It is anonymous, don't worry about it. Um, you're gonna choose vitamin rich foods to correct deficiencies and I encourage everyone to review the density food charts from the world's healthiest food. It is a, a free site. You need to upgrade your plate with real whole plant-based foods. Some of the ways that I enjoy and I tell my clients to do it is uh, smoothies and juicy, juices. That's a great way to flood the body with nutrients that are destroyed by heat. Um, minerals aren't destroyed as much as, as vitamins are. Minerals will displace, meaning if, if it's heated up, it'll just slide off into the water that it's cooked in. But Vitamins can be destroyed. So um, you want to try to eat, get your you know, vitamins uh, in a raw form or gently uh, cooked form. So um, yeah, lightly cooked mineral rich foods or raw veggies. Um, if you're eating animal products, um, choose clean sources and eat a rainbow color, rainbow foods um, and eat seasonally. These are all things that are gonna help you um, use food as medicine and to eat right for you. Now for an advanced plan, I offer a functional nutrition assessment consultation. Um, it's a 60 minute consultation with a, a much more detailed functional nutrition scorecard, scorecard than I gave you and a customized action plan. I'll tell you more about that in an upcoming blog that I'll do to see if that feels right for you. Um, and I guess now we go, we're at the end of um, the presentation and we can just start asking questions if you have any. So I'm gonna stop the share so that I can, you can see my face. Right. So Tony, we had a few questions in the chat and um, one came to me privately. So um, I don't know if you received some privately, but I wanted to start with John 
Uh, he yeah. sent the question about chewing food. How do you know when it's enough? And his second question is, what about what's a good water system that uh, you would recommend? Um, he likes referrals. I know personally from my experience, John, um, I mean, we have a restaurant here, the, the, the Land of Kush, and, and we uh, use Ashe water. The pH balance is 7.9. Mm -hmm. I can tell you a story that when my husband was drinking the tap water, he just seemed to always have this nausea like, and he, he didn't feel well and he would be bedridden. And I, I would tell him, I think it's the water that tap water is no good. Like I am not a tap water person. So all of my water has to be filtered or I, I most some has to be done to it before I can drink it. Cause I just swear there's just something in the water. And after he stopped, he, he hasn't experienced that. And it's been a few years. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, we'll start with the water question first yes absolutely as I stated earlier it's super important to clean to drink clean water now um, my preference and only my preference for for your own safety is to have your own filtered water a lot of you I know go get bottled water here's the problem with bottled water um, you don't know the source you don't know where it's coming from secondly it's in bottles that are not BPA free so once the heat hits it you're gonna get all those estrogens in your body particularly women we are heat seeking missiles for estrogen. So they're what they call xenoestrogens. Um, and so it will stop your own body from creating the estrogens that you need that are healthy and replace it with the poor estrogen with, that causes what? Breast cancer. So yeah, so the water filter suggestion I make, um, I have used a couple. One is Aquafina, um, not Aquafina, Aquasana, which is a whole house water filter. But the one I'm using now that most of my clients love is the Berkey water filter. The reason I love the Berkey water filter is that you can put tap water in it and it filters all that out and it also has a fluoride filter and it is absolutely hands down the best tasting water I've ever had and I am a, um, I like water so it needs to taste good. It's very clean, very pure and I love to drink it. So that's what I would suggest. If you, if you don't want to buy the Berkey and they're relatively inexpensive, they run anywhere from $100 to $500 depending on how big it is. You can go to your local market and haul your food, haul your water in. Um, the problem, again, is that you're relying on people to service that machine that has reverse osmosis. And I have been a victim, I can tell you, because I'm very sensitive to taste, where I'm pretty sure that the machine wasn't processed or wasn't uh, cleaned or calibrated, and I could taste something, like I could smell chlorine or something. So I say control, just like you control your own food source, control your own water source. So Berkey, the Berkey water filter, if anybody wants to know more about that, I can actually send you information. Oh, we can post it on Black Veg, the Berkey water filter. Yeah, I actually um, have a white paper on it. Yes, yes, we can do that on the on the blog, absolutely. I mean, again, bvsmd.org, and we do have a blog page. Yeah. Um, I know people were asking about how to make the, the water more desirable, which <laughs> I, I'm not, you know, I'm working on my water drinking too. So I, I know, I understand, and someone posted about the, cucumbers and lemon and uh, some people put rosemary and um, oranges so you know you have to do I'm telling you Tony's on point about the water everything she described that happens to you it can be you know that water it's a miracle drink and my daughter is eight years old and her go-to is water it's not soda it's not all these sugary drinks she drinks water start them early with water and we won't have this situation about oh how do we make it desirable <laughs> and to be honest with you if you've had tap water if you've had um designer water you know that you don't know where it's coming from it we, we we don't know what good water tastes like anymore even my husband when i got the berkey filter he said he could tell he could tell the difference it was yes so you can yummy. um and again so until your taste buds catch up yes you can put um, lemon and oranges, whatever it takes, get that water into you, get that water. Because even if you eat, you buy all this expensive food, if you're not drinking enough water, it can't transport to the nutrients. It can't, uh, to the cells, the cells won't absorb it because these are um, nutrients that require water, a certain amount of water. Um, there was another question too about the chewing. Um, how much chewing do you have to do? Scientifically, because I've done a research on this and um, every, all my experts that I rely on say, 42 chews. Most of us aren't going to do that. So here's a rule of thumb. If you're eating foods that are high in fiber, you want to make sure it turns to pulp. 
If it's turning to pulp, that means you have released amylase and lipase. These are two enzymes that are important that have to be done in the mouth because it's the only place there's mechanical breakdown can happen. Everything else is going to be chemical. If it's too big when it goes down, then it's like spitting on a forest fire. So you got to give yourself a chance by chewing food, even smoothies, even though it's pre-digested for the most part and blended, you still want your own digestive enzymes mixed in with it. I even chew juices. Yeah. Um, did we, thank you for helping me out with this, Nigel. I really appreciate it. Were any other questions about water? Um, someone was asking about purified water. Uh, if that was, um, what about purified water? So that was a question. Well, what about it? And sparkling water. I know I like sparkling water as long as it doesn't have all this crazy ingredient stuff in exactly. there. Exactly. I mean, that, what, however you can get the water in that's not um, harmful, I say do it. So a lot of people do need the bubbles and, you know, the sparkling effect, particularly if you're, um, if you're used to drinking sodas that had that fizz to it. So that's a really good place to start. Yeah. Um, Gosh, we, I, I'm so happy to hear, my heart is so full. I'm so happy to hear that people are actually inquiring about water because I'm telling you, it makes all the difference in the world. I can tell you from day to day, even my own skin, you know, cause I'm of a certain age and I can tell like, you know, the lines are deeper when I don't drink enough water. Super important if you want sub, sub, supple skin. Um, cause we all can be blessed with nausea skin, which is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I do my best. And I still need to drink more water, so. <laughs> Um, any other comments and questions? There's, there's a lot in there, Tony, and I'm trying to, you know, oh. gather them all. Some are coming to me directly. If you could just look in the chat yeah, and sure. I can look at some that's coming to oh, me girl. directly. I don't know oh, if you yeah, got some. Um, let's see. I, what I may do if we run out of time, I'm going to, we're going to do a blog, um, post. And if, if you didn't answer questions here, I'm going to probably have a list of questions with answers, frequently asked questions to help you out. So don't you worry. There was, uh, Leah had a question about um, let's see. Leah. the uh, pregnancy. Let me just see. Okay, Can we get rid of the ring? I guess, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we took care of that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I took care of it. So you took care of the static, um, cut off the doorbell. Can you please uh, place the website in the chat? Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, which website are you talking about? Okay, somebody already put it in there. And I'm going to also put the, before we even go too far, I want to put the, um, the links to the Black Veg Society of Maryland um, uh, free giveaway for filling out the survey and also my gift to you for just showing up um, for your health to be enrolled and uh, to be invited to participate in the raffle. So we're just going to keep going down. Uh, yeah, that's static, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah Sorry. it was just the, the rubbing of the mic or something that was going on on your end tony once we figured it out but it's all yeah good. so when the registration link was in the confirmation page it needed to be copied and pasted okay yes there was a self-assessment in the link if you can't find it please go thank you naja for that um you, you were busy in the background <laughs> yeah um let's see is sea moss considered a sea vegetable absolutely is spring water okay spring water it depends, depends on the source, right? If you can trust who it's coming from, because sometimes they just use tap and you just can't trust companies. Also, you have to make sure that it's in a BPA free bottle, particularly for females, because you don't want that plastic leaching. They leave those plastic bottles out in the sun and those um, estrogens get in your body. So you don't want to sacrifice um, your health for hydration. Um, so try, know the source. Um, I have a private question about hypothyroidism, and I'm uh, going to answer that. Um, someone has hypothyroidism and um, functioning of the thyroid gland. A lot of foods like broccoli and spinach, they don't recommend. Absolutely, particularly if it's hypo, yeah, hypothyroid, you have to have a balance of the iodine uh, with the selenium. So we have, to, I'd have to look at, I'd have to look at your particular um, nutrient assessment to let you know what's right for you. Um, but you're, you're absolutely like, right. So a lot of brassicas is not good. Um, oh, there is a best, is there a best vegan vitamin to help with these lack of vitamins? So that was one from oh, Leah. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like any, any vitamin or mineral that is food based because the body is designed to recognize food and nothing else. So if it's mostly chemicals, it's got to go through all that and say, okay, what can I use? I like garden of life. Um, oh yeah. 
yeah, I like, I like their protein powders too. Oh, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Highly absorbable. And I've, I've had clients on, on, on that for 30 days and a lot of their numbers just went through the roof. Um, I offer that through my um, online dispensary through uh, full script. So if anybody's interested, again, I'll post all this stuff on black veg. You can go in there and shop away and get a huge discount <laughs> because um, I, I, I want to offer the service to my clients so they don't have to look all over the place for clean, clean, um, uh, clean um, supplements. Also, liquid is always best if you're having digestive issues. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. Leah said any, any prenatal tips that she should be aware of. I have so to get any... to know you as a person. Um, okay. So I don't, I don't offer. Um, so tips. Leah, you got to reach out to True Self Total Health for that yeah. uh, so individualized. That would be, a, mm -hmm. that would be irresponsible. Um, the word, someone said the Berkey water filters are absolutely amazing. Yes, they are. They are. They are. And I can, um, again, I have a white paper and I have a link. Um, full disclosure, I, I, do, um, I do receive an affiliate fee for that, but I only endorse products that I believe in. So uh, Janice says, I just finished a 10 day water fast. I bet you feel amazing. Yeah. yeah. How was that for you? Um, let's see. Excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. They need a link to the survey. So I guess you had the, the pre yeah, like, yeah, thank you. I, need to put that. I got kind yeah. of distracted. What would I do without you? I shudder to think. So I'm going to go. It's very important, especially if you want the veg journal guide for a year and any of the, um, the, the recipe, that'd be great. And just so we know what else we should offer in terms of um, programming and webinars yeah. and workshops, because Black Veg is, is collaborating with organizations and sponsoring um, certain programs. And we need to know what is the best thing to deliver to our audience. So this all helps. I just, and the link is just posted. Mm -hmm. I did. So um, the slideshow from the presentation, what I will do is um, if anyone needs to reach out to me about something in particular, I'm happy to do that. It's educational, so uh, and it's intellectual property, so I tend not to release the slides, but I, um, I, I'm planning to do a guide for um, Black Veg for people that want to use food as medicine, so just be on the lookout for that in the very near future. Uh, let's see, keep going. If anyone needs to leave, feel free to, but I'm going to hang in there as long as I can to get all these questions answered. The brand name of the plant based vitamin, the I brand like, name I of like, the plant. I like Garden of Life. Super Garden of Life. And because it's food based, so the body will recognize it uh, much easier than uh, some of those others that have incipients in them and heavy metals. Um, uh, let's see, let's see. Would you please discuss? Uh, fibroids. So the private message to me, I want you to reach out to me because that's a, that's a fully loaded um, um, discussion. And a lot of people that have issues like that, it's related, it's an autoimmune response it's related to dairy and wheat. And so we'll talk about how to modify your diet if you just reach out to me. Okay. And, and Katrina, are you asking how to reach out to Tony? If you want to reach out to Tony directly, they're going to True Self Total Health because I'll put that in there, True Self, for um, individual um, yeah, if you have assessment, consultation, and things like that. You go directly to True Self Total Health yes. for um, any information or free resources. You can come to bvsmd.org. Uh, I work with Tony and a, a, a bunch of other wonderful folks on a lot of different things. So if you want general, the survey is in the link. There's a link that we just posted. It says BVSMD survey link and then raffle registration page. We just put it in the chat, Car uh, Carmel Owens. It's just above um, your post, about six above there. I'm going to post it again. There we go. So if you guys and then, want to go ahead. And then and, we can send an email out to yeah, we, we just will, to have all of that stuff in there. I'm going to do a blog post on the next day or two because, well, I'll say three days because I really want you guys to, um, there's some highlights that I want to make sure you, that, you, um, that you do. Hey, you know what? I, if you all have time, I'm experimenting with this. I'm just learning how to play with polling here. Somebody asked about COVID. Do you believe that home remedies heal the COVID-19? I don't think we can really uh, can't say that. Mm -mm. That is not what we can say. Yeah. Uh, but on BVSMD, there is a guide that Tony has put together. If you go to the blog page at bvsmd.org, she has an immune 
uh, guide that uh, talks about some things you can do um, related to COVID. So I would suggest, suggest that you check that out, Marie. Yeah, so I'm gonna, if you guys, again, if you need to go, please feel free, but I, I did a poll because I wanted to know the reasons for nutrient deficiencies based on this audience. And it's, it's, um, it's anonymous, so if you play, um, you won't be um, outed. <laughs> so um, I'd appreciate if you could um, just go in, all of you, if you could just go in there. And if, if, if this doesn't feel like something you want I'm to- I'm gonna do your hair. Tell, tell daddy just give me a second. So the choices are, remember at the beginning of the webinar, we talked about um, the reasons for deficiency. And wow, thank you guys, awesome job eating the same food over and over again, eating when stressed. Okay, I'm trying to see who the winner is. Um, not eating enough nutrient dense food. Okay, wow, wow, wow. Um, dehydration, right up there, 46% of you guys. This, you needed to hear this today. Um, yeah, we're still, you guys are still going. You're still going. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, eating uh, the food. Okay, 61% of you are eating the same food all the time. Really a bad habit because of convenience. The problem with that is the body will start, if you eat the same food over and over again because it wants you to eat more foods, it's smarter than you are, you'll start to develop allergies because it's wanting you to get something else in your body. So you've got to eat that rainbow of foods, um, not enough nutrient dense foods. That means probably that you're either not getting enough quantity or quality. So that can be relatively easy to fix. Eating when stressed, absolutely horrible because if you go right from rushing and then eat, your body is already shut down. It's like, I'm not digesting food. I gotta be, you're being chased by a tiger. It doesn't know that you're just under normal stress. All your digestive fire goes out because the body can only do one thing good at a time. It's either gonna run, it's gonna rest and digest or it's gonna flee. Um, digestive impairment, 31%. I'm gonna venture that most of you have, that number is probably gonna be a little higher. Prescription drugs, yep, prescription drugs don't reside rent-free in your body. So it's there to fix a symptom and blow up your digestive system. So we've got to get you off prescription drugs and get to the root cause of what's causing the problem. I don't expect anybody to just get off drugs immediately, but let's work towards getting to the root cause so that you can um, save your life. <laughs> alcohol, alcohol abuse runs rampant in this country. Alcohol strips your B vitamins, full stop. B vitamins, um, convert your food to energy. You got to stop that. So it looks like um, the numbers are still coming in, but 61% of you have voted. Um, and I'm going to keep the poll open for just a little while longer. Um, but yeah, the, the, the winner is um, eating the same foods all the time. And that can be relatively easy to fix. Uh, of all these items that are on here, I think one of the areas that I'm going to discuss next, if, um, if Naja agrees with this, we're going to talk about impairment of digestive system and how to improve that because it's Yes, not yes, I think that's a good one. Yeah. Can, can I ask a question? I mean, and you may or may not be able to answer this question. Well, you know, we're, we're, we live holistically in, in my household, um, but if we need to take a, a drug based on doctor um, prescribed, then we, we will. So my, my daughter went through an ear infection and normally we're able to clear that up with boron homeopathics. But this last go around, um, we had to uh, get the amoxicillin. And yeah. now she took that for 10 days and now she has an issue with her stomach that I'm upset about. So it's bothering her. What do we do? Because we're putting, uh, giving her probiotics, but what, what's next? <laughs> yeah. So I, I, uh, I'm not anti-drugs if it's to improve your quality of life, and, but we need to clean her up. So anti means antibiotic, kill life. So it killed everything, including the, the, bad, the good guys and the bad guys. So we have to restore the good guys. Um, I like uh, um, custom probiotics, and, and it's, it's the name of a company called Custom. And okay. I can tell you about that. It's, it, it will get her restored rarely, rather, rather easily. The okay. reason I like it is because it's in the right ratio so that when she does restore that good gut floor, um, it'll reduce the gut war that's going to happen. Because right now the bad guys are running rampant. They have yes. no protection. So yes. we, we have to get, the, get her gut floor up for okay. sure. Okay. Thanks, Tony. You're welcome. Um, so I guess the poll has ended, 45 of you answered, and 64% of you are eating the same food all the time, 56% of you are not eating enough dense, uh, nutrient-dense food, 47% of you are eating when stressed, 40% uh, of you are not chewing your food, 31% of you um, have digestive impairment, 31% uh, of you are taking prescription drugs, we have to work on that, 13% of you 
are drinking alcohol, I'm going to encourage you to, you know, that's one of the easiest things that you can stop doing to stop the, um, stripping your B vitamins and dehydration. Wow. Thank you for that. We have one more poll. If you want to play, I'm going to share the results. There you go. Can everybody see that? Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I try not to eat all the food, the same food all the time. Like I like variety. <laughs> but <laughs> my, I would have been in di dehydration, you know, because I know I, I can do better with water. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, here's the thing. It, it takes discipline. Here's what we, we, we spend less time doing something that is the most important function for our body. We give food a drive by. You can take time and prepare food. Even my husband now, he, 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 he makes soup, like a variety of soups and he freezes them. You can plan your meals. You can cook once, eat it three times, but it's important to bury up your food and to take the time uh, to invest in, in your health. Food is about pleasure, but it's more about health. It's pleasurable so that you can do it. Um, okay, anybody ever, are y'all done with that, that poll? All right. It looks like that. There's two more questions that came in. Um, someone said working on the computer a lot besides tools to limit to, exp to the exposure to Wi-Fi does make a person decrease in vitamins and minerals. So I think they're asking that. Does that make a person decrease in vitamins and minerals? And someone asked, do you think biologically matched hormones are good? Oh, gosh. That's a whole, it, it, the, the simple answer with the biologically, um, um, the bioidentical hormones, it depends. It's, 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 it depends on the person. Um, I think if quality of life is impacted, um, yes, but we always wanna get to the root cause of why there is an imbalance. There's a wonderful test called the Dutch hormone test that will let us know what's happening in your body, you know, because it's a combination of adrenals um, as well as your sex hormones. And if we figure out where you're having nutrient deficiencies, you can fix that. So you don't have to do bioidentical, but I'm a big fan of quality of life. So if you're sweating all the time, you're irritable, yeah, let's do that, but let's look for the root cause. Um, okay, so I'm going The to... other one was just exposure to Wi-Fi and things like that, I working on a computer, decreasing I... vitamins and minerals. Well, anytime you're exposing, um, it, I don't know any specific nutrients because um, you're, you're talking about radiation, so you need something to pull out radiation like chlorella. Chlorella is good for that. Oh, um, yeah, I've heard of that product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Eat a lot of that. Was this helpful to every uh, everyone? Maybe we could do a poll, yes or no, real quickly before an extensive survey, just to get an idea. Because again, yeah. um, we we at BF BVSMD are just trying to uh, meet people where they are and deliver um, the best possible information that we we can within an hour. Because we know people's times are short, but you know, just trying to deliver something to you quickly but uh, impactfully. Yes, yes, and, and we, we're about five minutes over and I appreciate your continued attention. So yes, I, we would love to hear, put it in the chat or we can open up microphones if you wanna um, share with us. Sure, yeah, that's, a, that's fine, uh, Tony. We can do that if people yeah. wanna, wanna yeah. chat. So we'll open that up. Um, Meantime, while you're doing that, we can launch another poll. This is about your nutrient assessment. I'm curious as to where everybody stood on that assessment chart. So what did you learn? Did anybody have any ahas? I always hear um, people say that, you know, they, they've done a lot of research and they thought they knew something, but they learned something, you know, new. So can anyone share out loud, either in the chat or just um, ask to speak um, and we can open up. Okay, I, I can lower your hand and ask to unmute. Uh, let's see. There you go. Um, nope, that's you, Naja. I had a hand up. Yeah, I saw the hand too. I don't know where they went. Okay. Let's try okay. Again. Whoever had their hand up. I'm learning this. Me too. <laughs> learning this too. So, <laughs> so any, any, let's see. Someone said, I, we, we enjoyed the session. Thanks. It was very informative. Yes, wonderful talk. There's a lot of information. And the important thing is for you to take that information and do something with it. You invest it, even if it's free, you invested your time in this. So go home and say, what one thing can I do? Can I drink more water? You know, can I do that assessment and see where my nutrient deficiencies are? Can I um, eat more of a rainbow of food? Do something, commit to doing something, please. Uh, I love what I do, but more importantly, I love when I see people do something with what I do. So. 
Um, thank you for answering questions. Absolutely. Um, Does anyone want to say anything that we need to unmute before we kind of, because again, we are a few minutes over and we just want to value everyone's time. Absolutely. And okay. And we'll have another one next month. Well, Tony, you can tell them. <laughs> yeah, we, another, we are going to have another one next month, um, probably about the same time uh, and day on a Saturday. But I think we're going to go into digestive health unless you all tell us something different in the poll, because it's not what you eat, it's what the body absorbs. And a lot of people have digestive issues and they're not even aware of it. Um, and so we're going to, I think, if, unless you tell us something different, I think that's what we're going to talk about next month. Um, digestive health, food as medicine and using um, and having good digestive health um digestion would be awesome good 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 so that's what we're going to cover reminder please do complete that survey so that we'll know um, what to offer you in the future also um uh, you're you've been eligible to participate in a raffle 25 dollars gift certificate from whole foods market you got to play to win so in order to be eligible for the raffle we've got to capture your name and we'll be using something called pick a name which is an electronic app that will pick your name and um, i'll alert the person through email but it will also put that information in the blog so we can stay connected Yes. Yes. The survey uh, has been linked in the chat, but we'll also send it out to everyone that's registered uh, via email. And again, if you want that one year subscription to Vegetarian Journal, we must get your mailing address. That is a must because it won't be sent out digitally. It will be mailed to you. Yes. Um, one last thing. Oh, one, one more question. This is the last question we'll take. Does yeah. the Berkeley offer filters for your refrigerators? They just bought two new <laughs> filters for their refrigerator. Sure. If you go to their site, they may. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure that they do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so right. here's here, here the quick survey that we did. 34 of 61 of you, 55% voted. And it looks like um, B6 uh, looks like magnesium. Not surprising. That's what I see in my practice. Most of you are magnesium deficient. Yeah. Yeah. That was me too. I had to get uh, that going too. And that was because of stress. And I think I talked to you about that, Tony. <laughs> and B vitamins get stripped under stress too. Just saying you guys, that's a quick way to strip your vitamins. And um, so we got to make sure that we control the stress. And if not, don't be afraid to supplement short term for quality of life while you get to the root cause. I do not believe in living on supplements because they're just as the name implies, supplement. So we're going to end the poll um, because I think everybody got a chance to, to who wanted to play. So you can see 24% um, of you, it's magnesium. I'm going to say probably more. Um, that's it. Uh, I enjoyed this so much. Thank you so much for coming. I'm looking forward to doing this every month, helping you learn and grow and become healthy and understand how to use food as medicine and take control of your own health and happiness because you can. Thanks for attending everyone. And thank you again, Tony, uh, for uh, collaborating with Black Veg on this. We appreciate it. it fun. Bye all.